Master Geo here at New York Comic Con and Jacob Javits Center for day three. This is the most insane day of all. It is packed to the rafters. Now let's go and kick some freaking ass. Master Geo here Saturday, New York Comic Con with the lovely Catherine Kokarin. How are you doing, Catherine? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. Oh, no problem. So, how um, how is Troma? Uh, so far, so good. You know, I've we've been. This is my first day here, but they've been here all weekend and they've been doing Troma parades, so it's awesome. And I hear tonight they're actually doing a um, test screening of Volume Two to get some audience feedback at Videology. So that'll be really cool at midnight tonight, which will be really, really awesome for the fans to check out. A little exclusive preview before it hits theaters, you know. Right. So, uh, how close is it to being uh, the done product? It, they're almost there. When Lloyd starts doing these test screenings, I mean, they're kind of in the finishing stage. I think we were just talking, he's got one more scene to go, and then it should be finished, and then we'll start, you know, putting it in theaters, festivals, you know, the whole shebang. And ideally, you'll be able to watch it as a double feature. So we'll show the first one, the second one, classic, drive-in, movie style, you know, a little homage to the past. So it'll be a really fun time, you know? Um, well, the, f the first volume is one of my favorite movies of the year. How does this one compared to that one. What well, can we expect? Well, without giving details? <laughs> the second, I, again, I can't give too much details, but the second one is very much, volume two is very much our return of the Jedi to, um, you know, return to Nukem High volume one. The characters are bigger, crazier. You think that you've seen a lot go down in volume one and you have no idea what the Korean army is planning, what some of the monsters that will will unveil that you haven't seen yet. And, um, Chrissy and Lauren really kind of take take control of who they are and become these like you know badass superheroes. So it's really awesome to watch the characters come into their own, you know. So I'm excited for people to see it. I really am. It's gonna be cool, especially to watch them as an anthology. It really is supposed to be seen that way. So it'll be cool. It'll be really cool. How is it working with Lloyd? Working with Lloyd is uh, intense. I think actually I I said this over and over again. I'll I'll continue to stand by it. Speaking of which. Speaking of which. <laughs> I think that every actor, filmmaker should have to work for Lloyd on a trauma set. I think it is the best experience. It really is like film boot camp. Um, you think you know about making movies and you know nothing until you work for Lloyd Kaufman. Um, but in that, he's really kind of a dream because he lets you grow and blossom and take on whatever responsibilities you want to take on. So if you're interested, you know, in expanding or learning more, he is interested in collaborating. And that, and I don't, you don't see that a lot with a lot of directors, even in indie film, who really value your creative input as an individual. And that's, you know, why the film is so strong and why, you know, we as the Troma team are really passionate about the project. So yeah, it's a dream. It's a dream to work with him. People complain, but he's the man. How is it working with Asta? Asta, actually, she just got married. I was just in her wedding. Uh, she is one of my best friends. She continues to be. Uh, we connected from day one, and you know, have been really close ever since. So uh, I, you know, I loved working with her. I will always have a little special place in my heart, even though I have to share her now with another. Um, it's okay. He's, you know, within the trauma family, so I guess it's tolerable. <laughs> How is shooting those the love scenes with her? Uh, it was great. We blocked it all out beforehand. Lloyd believes that you should um, shoot uh, the nude scenes first to get the awkwardness out of the way. So that was the second day of production. We were just kind of like thrown into that. But we had blocked it and rehearsed it so many times because Lloyd is a really big, uh, you know, advocate for rehearsal. And so um, at that point, you know, we had really kind of had it down to a science. It was kind of rhythmic and, and funny. Um, there's a part where we drip green goo into each other's mouths and that was um, gluten-free vanilla pudding. So it was like kind of fun and like delicious. So we, you know, that's how I kind of, you know, explained my, my time with Asta on screen like that. Very fun and delicious. It was like a great experience. How is it working with all the special effects? 
Uh, that was crazy. There is a ton. Um, you see a ton more in volume two, so without giving too much away, I know that we've showed um, the first five minutes. We've released that, so you can see the first five minutes of volume two, and you can see this huge prosthetic that I have to uh, wear that was actually six different prosthetics that were all put on and off and growing and things, and so that's really cool. And I was actually watching it the other day and realized I um, and I completely forgot about this. I have like a, a puppet credit because one of my prosthetics is a puppet and like does these cool, so it's like, it was really, really interesting. I learned a lot. I learned a lot about special effects makeup, not makeup itself, and about, you know, these people really are artists. They put so much into what they do. And it's a testament, again, to Lloyd and Troma. They use practical effects like this because these these items are really sculptural works of art. And that, in the realm of CGI, that's not really as popular anymore. So it was really cool. What other projects have you been involved with? Um, my background, I worked on Gossip Girl, on The Good Wife. I did a lot of that stuff. I was like a child actor. I did a lot of tours of different, you know, Broadway, off-Broadway productions. And then um, now I'm attached to a new horror film. It goes into production next week, actually. It's from Free Stoked About called Terrifier. That'll be really awesome. It's uh, <laughs> The fans are so awesome. And um, I'm writing for Gore Noir magazine, which I'm really excited about. And I'm attached to three other films, which I'll slowly start to announce throughout the year. So it should be it should be a big year for me. So I'm happy to share it with you guys as it comes out. Keep, stay tuned. Sure, totally. So check out Master Geo. He's the best in the business. He's the best to go to for all the exclusive interviews. And uh, if you want to hear more, you can read my articles, Diary of a Scream Queen, on uh, the Gore Noir website. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter, Catherine Corcoran, and or follow me at www.catherinecorcoran.info. All right. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hope you guys enjoy Comic-Con. Thank you.